This week's Ion MPI is from Renaissance, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Lena, what is this week's new product introduction? It's great. It's from Renaissance, which we've only done once before. So um, I do like to highlight um, a bunch of different companies. Uh, Renaissance is a, a massive uh, multinational, but uh, originally Japanese company. Um, and they make a whole bunch of products. So um, when this popped up, this sensor, and you know me, I love sensors. Uh, this is the FS1015. It is an airflow velocity sensor. Uh, it comes in this package. Um, I'll show it on the overhead later, but there's basically a slot in the sensor. It's kind of an all-in-one module. Um, there's a slot and you can blow air through it up to 15 meters per second, which I looked up, it's uh, 30 miles per hour. Um, and it will uh, generate a signal for you and allow you to measure it. Um, this is a cool sensor because it uses, um, you know, solid state MEMS uh, thermotransfer technique, which I, I don't know about this principle, but apparently this is what it uses and it seems to work quite well. Um, and so it's coated, uh, even though this is designed for air, um, it could probably be used for other gases and you don't have to worry about, um, you know, corrosion or clogging. Uh, most flow sensors that we've seen, you know, water flow sensors in particular, um, use an impeller like this where, you know, um, it's, it's hooked up uh, to a Hall effect sensor when air or water flows through. Um, the little uh, fan spins around and you can do the counts and then you convert the counts into um, meters per second or, you know, overall flow rate. For wind speed, um, you know, of course, uh, folks are familiar with um, anemometers, uh, you know, or uh, these are sometimes used at uh, airfields or airports, uh, but also people have them on top of um, their uh, houses sometimes or their, you know, this traditional farmhouse is a little like uh, rooster uh, with one of these uh, rotating cups. And by uh, counting the speed of the rotation, you can uh, calculate uh, wind speed. Uh, so this sensor is, of course, much smaller and doesn't have mechanical parts, which is great. It's like one less thing that you have to worry about possibly breaking. Um, and this is part of a series of sensors. So if you're like, hey, this is a cool airflow sensor, but what if I want to do liquid uh, sensing? There's also the FS20 uh, or 1012, um, which is, is uh, Renaissance owns IDT, um, Integrated Data Technologies, and uh, they made a version that had these um, uh, barb prong uh, tubing connectors so that it could be used for liquid. Same overall deal, same kind of sensor, but uh, those sensors, I believe, are analog only. Um, but they do uh, basically use the same functionality. So this is the, the error version of the liquid sensors. Um, yeah, so this is a, uh, so just to indicate for uh, people, also stocked by DigiKey, they have quite a few of these in stock. The FS1012 um, is used for um, liquid sensing. So check that out if this is not quite what you want. You want something uh, fluid, not gaseous. Okay. But this is a sensor. So what I thought was really interesting about this sensor is um, oftentimes sensors like these just give you like a kind of a weird analog output or they give you like a resistive output then you have to set up, um, you know, a bridge or some like, you know, current sensing or whatever. Uh, and you need a, a, you know, op amp and all this wiring. But what was really neat is um, this sensor, when I saw the pinout, I loved it because it's, you know, you have power and ground and I think it's three to five volts power and ground. Um, there's an analog output, which we'll show next, and then there's I squared C output. So that's like really handy because a lot of, you know, microcomputers these days, if you want to hook this up to, um, say, your Raspberry Pi, it doesn't have analog input. You could use I squared C instead. Um, so this is the flow graph. There's two versions of this sensor. This is just one version. This is the 7.5 meter per second max versus the 15 meter per second max. And you can see the analog output is like, you know, linear-ish. Um, they do give you a table uh, that you can use to um, calculate. Uh, and then in the middle is the analog voltage, uh, zero to five volts. And then on the right is the output in counts. Um, so the I squared C, which is uh, not actually not linear, um, but the I squared C output um, will give you a digital count and then you can convert that to air velocity. Um, the I squared C interface is pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, you query it on address 50, 
uh, you get five bytes. Three of those bytes are um, checksum, uh, beginning checksum, end checksum. And then there's two bytes in the center that contain the uh, 12 bits of measurement data. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, I whipped up some Arduino code in like 10 minutes and it worked just great. You know, I, I blew into it and, um, you know, I'll show the demo as well. It uh, increments the numbers and you can uh, plot it very easily. So this is me sort of blowing into the sensor uh, while running the Arduino um, plotter. And then I can also show that. Yeah. So it's available at DigiKey. There is some in stock. There's 14 mm. right now. And uh, let's do your demo, and then we have a video. Yeah, so let's show the demo. So I just have this hooked up on uh, the overhead here. Let me just uh, turn on the autofocus lock. Uh, so I've got it on a feather, and I'm just using a STEM IQT cable to make the wiring easy. Um, this is the sensor itself, uh, so you can see it here. And then um, this is the slot, so you can see there's, there's no impeller, there's no mechanical connection, but there is a hole that um, you expect air to go through. And then, you know, the natural just like, you know, airflow from a room is about 500. And then if I go over here and blow into it. Neat. <laughs> you can see, you can see my lips there. You won. Um, yes, I win the game, which is you can make the flow rate sensor go up. So um, works really great. It's a very easy um, way to use it. And I love that it comes with both analog and digital sensors. All right, here's a really cool video. We'll see you on the other side. This is Renaissance. Renaissance was born after three Japanese technology giants, Hitachi, Mitsubishi Electric, and NEC, took the bold step of merging their semiconductor businesses to create one company. It is from this rich technological heritage derived from these companies that the foundation of Renaissance is formed. Our proven technology and unwavering commitment to quality are what set us apart from our peers as a world-leading semiconductor company. More recently, Renaissance began expanding its footprint in Silicon Valley, first with the acquisition of Intercell in 2017, and then IDT in 2019. Renaissance successfully combined its proven quality with top-class safety standards and technical competency with the innovative products and entrepreneurial spirit of Intercell and IDT. In 2021, Renaissance completes its acquisition of Dialog, expanding its footprint in Europe. With Intercell, IDT, and Dialog now in the fold, Renaissance enters a new era as a truly cosmopolitan company with a progressive mindset and a modern vision to lead the industry. Okay, and so that was a fun video, and also you can see how to pronounce the name, Renaissance. Which is actually like why I picked the video. And I was like, how do you pronounce it? Also, I didn't know that they owned all those companies. Like I didn't know Dialog. Yeah. When it was and, and the company. best part is you can imagine when they're putting this together, they're like, hey, we need to show how we've globally expanded, but um, we have the samurai, but the samurai has to get on a plane and you're not allowed to have samurai swords on planes. This is not the Kill Bill universe the, yeah. where so samurai I, swords are allowed I just like that they, it was that thoughtful. They're like, they, they got to get on the plane, but they can't bring a sword with them. No. So like you just drop the sword off right there. Yeah. Yeah. You can get all the way through security, but on the plane, do the right thing. Drop the sword. But maybe he also realized that the, the, ne the next journey for him did not require a sword. Maybe he, he doesn't need it anymore. Blade cuts both ways. Okay, so uh, that's this week's INMPI. INMPI.